Hello YouTube family, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Sharita and welcome and in today's video, I am participating in a tag. This tag was started by Naturally Liz here on YouTube. If you are not following her, please, please check out her channel. I'm going to link it in the description box. Um, but basically this is going to be us content creators giving all the secrets, all the deets. I have had literally the creme de la creme. <laughs> of uh, fragrance influencers DM me just asking questions about like equipment and they're looking to upgrade. So what am I using here and there? And I'm always just willing to share. If you, I for the longest would link all of my equipment in my description box, but I mean, I don't know if people just don't look there, but yeah, these are all of the secrets, just transparent. And I hope that this helps someone because honey, this is your sign. This is your sign to start. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what equipment you have. If you want to create content, if you want to be a fragrance influencer, start right now with what you have, okay? And we're gonna help you along the way. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. All right, before we start, please, as always, be sure that you are subscribed. And if you find any value in the content along the way, give me a big thumbs up. So it is so amazing watching Liz talk about this stuff in her video. And I just love the questions that were posed, number one. And I feel like I learned so much more about her <laughs> with her responses. Um, just y'all, if you are not a content creator, you just don't understand how much hard work is put into each and every video that you see before you, okay? So I just wanna give a shout out to all of the content creators out there and specifically the, the fragrance content creators and even more specifically my women of color that are out here doing it because it's not a lot of us in this space and I just feel like we all feel like we have to do just that much more work, put that much more into our content for it to even be seen. Um, so I hope that what we're doing in this tag is helpful to someone out there. Okay, so the first question that she asked is, how long have you been recording YouTube videos? I started my channel in 2021, in July to be specific. Um, and my very first video was actually on getting my teeth done uh, abroad in Turkey. Best decision ever. Y'all, when I tell you I was given a quote of 50K to have these teeth done, I was given a quote of 50K in the US. I got all of the work done for like 8K in Turkey. Better quality than what they even have here, honey. Let me tell you. But anyway, we're going off on a tangent. Three and a half years, almost about three and a half years. Um, and I just, best thing I could have done is start my YouTube channel. I didn't know what my channel was gonna be about, you guys. I initially did the, the video just kind of telling my journey about Turkey and my dental experience. And after that, I was like, you know what? That was so fun. Just the shooting it, the editing, all of that. I said, you know, I'm going to do some sister lock content. That's what I thought my channel was going to be about. I only had probably three to five fragrances when I really started to get into fragrances and I started my channel. And I just on a whim was like, you know what? I'm consuming all this fragrance content. I don't have no family members to talk about this stuff too. Let me just go ahead and shoot a fragrance video and I can share my love for it with like-minded people. I have been doing it ever since. Like I still continue with the sister log updates and stuff um, here and there, but I found really early on that it was just not a lot to, to cover and chat about because I don't do a lot with my hair. So I found fragrance just easier to talk about, easier to, to create content around on a consistent basis because that is the one thing you have to understand. Once you start this, you have got to be consistent. You see it. Like when people fall off their channel, they don't took a year off, they don't took six months off. Honey, the algorithm is not going to continue to put out your content like it did back in the day. It's almost like you're gonna be starting from scratch, even if you have a large audience. And I know some people can disappear for a couple months, come back, but they come back and there is some level of consistency to it, even if it's spaced out. If they come out with a video once a month, at least they're consistent with the once a month. If you come out with a video every week, be consistent with once a week. I was consistent from the very beginning. I said, I'm going to commit to two videos a week. 
two videos a week from hella hot water is what I was putting out until I went full time. Just be consistent if you want to grow because it is critical. So the next video, I'm I'm so off on all these tangents, you guys. So the next question is, do you record on a phone or a camera? I record on a camera. I was fortunate to have a lot of high quality equipment before I started my channel. That is just a leg up I had because I was heavily into portrait photography before I started my channel. And I stopped because of COVID. Like I was shooting clients out of my home. Um, it's just something, a hobby. Like I was getting into it. I really wanted to learn how to taught myself all of the things. Okay, that's one thing about me. I can learn how to do anything. Anything artistic, I can learn how to do it and I can learn how to do it fast. So I had big lights already. Um, I knew how to work a camera already. Even though I had never shot video, it was just easy for me to pick up on because I understood f-stop, I understood shutter speed, I understood um, you know, how to light a subject. Now I have a lot of lights. I'm gonna give you like an overview of my entire setup and it's gonna seem like a lot because it is. Here is my setup. Um, these are my two main lights. They have extremely high output <laughs> as far as the light, which gives me that ultra bright look. Um, and I have a diffuser that is over that because if I don't have that, the lights would just be way, way, way too bright. Um, so they kind of even each other out without me having to reduce the output and quality of the light, which is very necessary for a bright look. So this is my camera here. And then I have the ring lights. There's my mic, which when I film, is actually going to be kind of over here um, across from my chair. And then, okay, ignore my desk. <laughs> this is a reflector. I always film with this here um, because what it's going to do with all the light in the room, it's going to bounce up onto my face, which gives me a glowy look. And then the last thing is I have a monitor here and I'm just really spoiled. You don't have to have that, <laughs> but it's just a nice to have. So you can really see how everything looks in frame because you won't have a monitor on your camera to show you. Even if you did, it will be extremely small and you won't be able to see anything. So yeah, that is my setup. These are the two backup lights that I have. And so basically, they're just going to be out of frame, but kind of in this area over here to the side and then in this area over here to the side. And yeah, that's it. But the quality of what you see in front of you shows. And I just think that if you're willing to invest more in your channel, it's going to pay off more. OK, I am making five figures every single month. I am doing this full time now, which covers another one of her questions. But I was working full time and working off duty jobs and creating content, two videos a week for almost three years. I would say about two and a half for sure because I have been self-employed technically since February of this year, okay? I kind of stayed in a reserve status just in case, you know, I wouldn't have to reapply for my job again. I would just be like, hey, I'm ready to come back because you're still keeping your certifications and all that up to date with the police department, the, the state. So I cut the cord officially, like officially cut the cord. I'm not in law enforcement in any capacity at all now. Full-time content creator as of, oh my God, has it been a couple months? I can't even remember the exact date. Lord, probably a couple months now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so full-time content creator now, able to pay all the bills and then some, like, you can make a lot of money even with a very small channel. I would say when you get around 30K, when you get around 30K, depending on how you set up your channel, depending on how you shake and move, you can absolutely make a lot of bank. But some people, this is just an outlet for them. This is just a creative thing they want to do to decompress, to just work that part of their brain. There's nothing wrong with that, but you can make your channel into whatever you want it to be. Trust me, you can make it whatever you want it to be. And if you believe that you can make this into a full-time job, you can make it into a full-time job. I thought it would take me way longer to get there, but I will, I decided I was committed like very early on that one day this is going to be my full-time job and today it is. So the next question is, do you record in HD or 4K? I've always recorded in 4K. I have a Canon 
90D, which is actually going to be an exceptional camera for the price point. I was fully prepared to drop my $3,500 on a Mark D4, um, which was what all the beauty girlies were using um, as far as the camera. But I found that I could find something very comparable for $1,000. And another tidbit, please don't be afraid to buy used camera equipment. Camera equipment holds its value and it is just something that you do not have to buy brand new. There are a lot of reputable used photography equipment um, dealers out there that you can get something really high quality b &H photo uh, Andromeda. Like check out those companies because as soon as you buy a camera, you decide you don't want it for whatever reason, they all have good return policies. So once it's returned, they have to sell that use and they have to mark down the price. Okay. And not only that, these Canons, these Nikons, um, these Fuji cameras, the Sony's, they all hold up very well. It's not going to be like buying a computer where you can better believe in about four or five years, you're going to need a new one <laughs> because that type of technology, they're just not built to last. Cameras are built to last and the more expensive ones are truly built to last, okay? I haven't changed my camera, haven't upgraded anything since day one, but you also need to keep in mind that the lens is even more important than the actual camera itself. So I have a 4K camera and it is specifically for video, okay? So you always have to keep that in mind too. Some are, are really great quality, but they're more so geared towards stills. Um, so really research your camera that you're buying so you don't run into any hiccups, but I have a Sigma art lens and it is 1.4 aperture. The lower the f-stop, like the higher the, uh, price. I feel like I paid maybe 800 for my lens if I'm not mistaken. Um, but you talking about crisp, sharp quality crisp, sharp quality. So next question is how do you plan your content? I use Asana, which is you can do the app or desktop um, because I think of stuff just kind of in the car. I'm always thinking about ideas for content like wherever I may be. So I definitely need something I can just have right here on my phone, but I also like using the desktop version too when I'm just, you know, in a vibe, in a mood, sitting here working at my desk, I have access to it there as well. And I just keep a, a easy ongoing list of content creation ideas so that when I do sit down to record, because that's our next question. Do I batch record? Absolutely. I shoot all of my content for that week in one day. Um, I try to shoot on Sundays now because I was always in such a mad rush to beat the landscaping people that come every Monday. Honey, if you ain't finished filming by 1230, you're gonna have to stop, okay? And I don't like being interrupted. When I start, I just wanna go. So Sunday, is usually when I film, I film all four videos for the week. But even back in the day when I only aired two videos a week, I was working full time so I could not edit four videos a week. So I was still filming my videos four in a batch. So back then I only had to film twice a month because I was doing like shooting for two weeks at a time. So now that I'm full time, I batch record once a week and I try to drop four videos a week now. When you're dealing with all these sponsored content brand deals, they a lot of them have to approve the content first. So sometimes I'll film four videos, but honey, we're waiting on Sephora to approve the content. And so it may not be back in time before the week ends. So you may see three videos that week, but my intent is always to put out four, all right? So next question is how long does it take you to edit one video? It just depends on how many fragrances I talk about. I get really long winded when I talk about my fragrances and I actually hate that. It's something I want to change, but it's like I get on here and I just get to rambling because I'm not on script. That's the thing, I'm not on script. And the longer you're shooting, the longer it's gonna take you to edit. So if I'm talking 15 minutes, I can get that video done like that. If I'm talking for 30 minutes, it's gonna take me twice as long. And as you see, I put quite a bit into production um, as far as, you know, like the little notes that pop up. Like I have to make those all from scratch in Canva. Um, my thumbnails, like you have to think about how long it takes you to edit a thumbnail for a video. The actual video itself on the fast end, if I'm not distracted and I'm easily distracted working from home, um, 
a shorter video that's like maybe 12 to 15 minutes, I can do that in like one or two hours. If it's 10 fragrances I'm talking about, I'm gonna probably take a good four or five hours because uh, it's just hard for me to focus sometimes. <laughs> if I got somewhere to be, somewhere to go, and I'm like, I gotta get this video edited, let me just hunker down and get it done, I can definitely do a long fragrance video in about three hours. I can edit it in three hours if I am just laser sharp focused. So next question is, do you shoot everything in one take? Definitely. Um, I mean, it's video. It's like you take a pause if you mess up and you start over from where you left off or messed up. I find that if you stop recording, scratch that video, do it again, like you're just wasting a lot of time unless something catastrophic has happened. Like I know I've had to re-record a video probably twice because like the sound or something is knocked out. Like if you have a separate mic that's plugged to your camera, if, if you make a mistake and press the button and turn your mic off, it's not gonna be any sound because it's not gonna use the mic in your camera as backup because there is an auxiliary plugged in. No, we gotta get these videos out and done. And it's, I'm an introvert. I know Simply Aisha touched on this in her video as well. It is draining for introverts to just talk and talk and talk. And even though I'm chatty about these perfumes in this video, filming four videos in one day is very draining. Like I'm not doing nothing after I film today, but going on a walk, having some food, sitting in front of the TV, like to decompress because even though you're not here in the room with me, like I'm, I feel, I still feel like I'm communicating with my community and I'm talking and it's just a lot for introvert. But don't let this stop you because most YouTubers are actually introverts. Okay, fun fact. So I use Final Cut Pro. If some people ask me like, what do you use to it? I use Final Cut Pro X. It is specific to Apple products. So you have to have an Apple. But honestly, with the kind of content that they recreate, it's not really complex. You can use iMovie if you have it on your phone or, or your iMac computer. You can use whatever editing programs they have, you know, with Windows. Um, DaVinci is free and it's like full-fledged editing program like Final Cut Pro is. So it doesn't matter where you are, you have no excuse. You can start with your phone. If you have an iPhone, they're very high quality now, you can use your iPhone. Just make sure your sound is good. I use a boom mic over my head. Let's see if I can put it in the frame. I have a boom mic over my head. Um, and that's just what I use because that's just the best sound for me. And I don't like the look of an actual lapel mic or lavalier mic. So the next question is, have you ever been recognized by a stranger from your channel? If so, how did it make you feel? Yes. And it's crazy because so you think because you have a small channel that no one is gonna recognize you. I'm telling you right when I started to get to like 4,000 subscribers is when the first time some stranger recognized me. Y'all, I was in a freaking Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class and another student came up to me and started fangirling. And I was freaked out because I was like, I only have 4,000 subscribers, okay? But the fragrance world is very small, but she recognized me for my hair content. The Sister Locks community is even smaller. So if you watch Sister Locks content, you've probably seen at least one of my videos because yeah, it's a very, very, very small world out there. But Atlanta is just a small world. So if you live in Atlanta and you got Sister Locks, you probably done seen me before if you watch any of this content on YouTube. So yeah, she was like, you are my little hair crush and I love your channel. So it was like kind of crazy, but it made me feel good. I gave her a hug and it was just like a good feel good moment for me, but it was also still like a little shocking. I was recognized out of the country twice, twice. I went back to Turkey a second time for like to get my actual um, implants, um, the crowns fitted on the implants in the back of my mouth. And I also went with my mom. She was starting part one of her dental, whatever she needed. So I was in Turkey and this girl walked up to my table. So she saw my Turkey video and she got her sister locks um, started like from watching my content. So she was in Turkey because of me. I saw her in Turkey 
I'm like, what are the odds? What are the odds of this happening, you all? And like I told you, if you watch my Bali vlog, the lady who waited on me at a fine dining restaurant, okay, recognized me from the fragrance content create. You're going to get recognized. Once you get to like four or five, you got like five, 10,000 subscribers, people are going to start recognizing you. Doesn't matter where you are, okay? I've been recognized in Atlanta at the gym, uh, during jujitsu, like it just, people are gonna recognize you, okay? So just be prepared because it's gonna happen. All right, so the next question is, is there one perfume you love that everyone else seems to dislike or do you dislike a perfume everyone else seems to love? I cannot get with Gris Charnel. And I have tried, I can't get with Passe Soir either, okay? So I said what I said, but I know that those are loved fragrances. I can appreciate the smell of them both. Like I understand it, I get it, because Gris Charnel smells absolutely amazing on my daughter. I wish that it smelled like that on me, but it doesn't. It goes rubbery, okay? That everyone else seems to dislike. I mean, I like a lot of polarizing scents, so there are so many that I absolutely love that a lot of people just don't like. I mean, that's just gonna happen when you're talking about fragrance, but is there's like something I was just like ranting and raving about and literally no one liked it? I don't know. I don't know. Because I gauge whether I want to continue to continue to continue to continue to talk about fragrances on my channel based off of my audience's response. If I'm talking about a fragrance, every third video and everyone is just like, girl, this thing stank. What are you talking about? I'm probably not gonna talk about it again. I'll probably just enjoy it in private. <laughs> like that's just me. But if people are keep chiming in, oh my God, I love guidance. You never lie. Oh my God, I love Blanche Bay. Oh my God, oh my God. Then you will see me talk about it more and more on a consistent basis. But if it's just something like, ain't nobody feeling this fragrance, but I'm feeling it, I will enjoy it in private, okay? But yeah, I don't know. Y'all tell me, is this something I always talk about that like all y'all just seem to hate? Let me know. I'm interested to know in the comments. So the next question is, if you could go back and give yourself one piece of advice before you start a YouTube journey, what would it be? Um, I feel like when we start our channels, we just don't know what to expect. We don't know if we will be successful at it. Um, and it's so hard in the beginning because it's such slow motion. I feel like when you're just starting and you see, oh my God, this girl got 5,000 views in one day. Like I couldn't wrap my mind around what I was doing wrong. And it's not that you're doing anything wrong. Like you just have to give things time. If you can honestly look at your content and you see the quality, you know that you're giving good recommendations that you can stand behind, that you're confident in, you're really building a community, the views, the subscribership, all of that is going to come. You just have to be patient. You have to give it time. And I just feel like what is for you is for you. And there is nothing that can stop that. If you're in a place where you have been really consistent, you have been doing the work, don't keep doing the same thing if you want to see different results. Again, some people just do this as a hobby. So it really doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're doing it for you and you're just doing it as an artistic outlet, that's one thing. But if you are really taking this serious, you want this to be a business, you want to really create a real income or second income, for your household because who can't use more money in this, you know, this climate right now, um, then think about how you can stand out. Try to think about ways how you can improve, teach yourself more. I've learned everything I know from YouTube University. So it can be done, it can be learned. You just have to put more into it. Like it's going to feel like a lot of work because it is a lot of work. If you're thinking you can just skate and skirt on by and this is gonna be like something you devote two hours to, a, a, you know, a month or a week, good luck, you know, good luck because that is just not most people's experience when they're talking about being a serious content creator. Um, but if you believe in yourself and what you're doing, 
it will happen for you. You just have to give it time. And I haven't been on YouTube forever, you know, not 10 years, um, but I've been at it very consistently for three and a half. And that's a lot of hours. That's a lot of work. Um, and it's really started to pay off. Like it has really changed my life and it can really change your life as well if that's what you want for yourself. So you have to decide what you want this to be and whatever you decide you want it to be is what it will be, okay? Whatever you decide you want it to be is what it will be. You guys, if you have any questions about what I've talked about, if you have any additional questions, just ask me, I will be happy to answer, I am working on creating a content creation course. Um, just very, very, very specific information on how you can just bypass having to do all this research and all of these scattered areas all over YouTube. I had to devote probably hundreds of hours of research <laughs> um, and learning how to do things in a very specific way that I wanted to see them come to fruition. I just wanna help you cut through all of that Sis, give me all the equipment, how to use it. Sis, how do you do the thumbnails? Sis, how are you making six figures with a small channel? I just wanna put it all in one place and hopefully it's something that you want and that you would need. I'm, I've even started taking consultations. Like people are paying me for advice because they like the way I create my content. So you can make, like I said, you can make whatever you wanna be. It can be fun, it can be business, whatever. It can be a little bit of both, which is what I find it to be for myself personally. Naturally, Liz, girl, thank you so much for tagging me on this video. I hope that this is helpful. Please watch her video and also watch everyone else's that has, um, you know, also done this uh, video tag because everyone, you're going to get these gems. I watched, uh, Simply Aisha's uh, video of it this morning as well. And I just love this sense of community that we have here in, um, you know, in the fragrance world is very special to me. And YouTube has literally changed my life. It has changed my life for all the better. And so hopefully this is of some help. Thank you again for tagging me, Liz. You guys, it has been real. Make sure you are subscribed. I love you all. And I will catch you guys on the next one.